Now this little device is what's known as a Crooks radiometer. This one is basically a science toy that I bought at the Discovery Place in Charlotte a few weeks ago. If you look closely, you can see the little kind of diamond shaped veins in there. One side of them is painted black and the other side looks like it's silver. Sometimes they're white. These look like they're silver colored. So there's gonna be a tendency for the black to absorb light and the silver side to reflect it. Let's take it out into the sunlight. Okay, you can see this radiometer is spinning counterclockwise. The video effects may interfere with the appearance of it, but it is spinning counterclockwise. Because one side of the veins is silver, the other side is black. The idea is the, the low gas pressure in the air provides just enough gas molecules so that the black side absorbs some light, heats up, causes those molecules to move more rapidly, and they tend to push the vein, uh, the black side of the veins, tends to push on the black side. In this case, in this particular system, it would be moving counterclockwise. A little easier to see the direction of rotation is counterclockwise looking down on it where there's less sunlight hitting it. Bright sunlight makes it spin so fast you can't really see it. Now this would not work if there was a perfect vacuum in there. You have to have some molecules to allow this effect to, to work. In other words, the black side heats up, makes the molecules kind of bump against it, push on them more than on the reflective side. In this case, it'll make it spin counterclockwise. Um, if you had too much air in there, it would just provide too much drag and slow it down. It would be hard to make it work. So that's basically how it works. Now what we're going to do is see if, if, if we can make this work with different colors of laser light and other things. I've got three laser pointers here. They're basically identical. They're all supposed to have a power level below five milliwatts. And, uh, but there's a difference in the wavelength range because of the color. This one is blue and it's supposed to have a uh, wavelength range of, or target of about 405 nanometers. This one is green. That's supposed to be 532 nanometers. This one is red, 650 nanometers. And uh, so, if you had to guess which one of these, the blue, green, or red, if any of them will make this thing spin. So, once you guess, we'll take a look at it and see, what, see if you're right or wrong. We're also going to look at a black light. This is a little hard to see, but this is a black light, flashlight. And this is just a normal LED Flashlight. We're also look at that. We're also going to look at a infrared terrarium heater. No visible light comes off of it. Just thermal infrared. Okay, let's try the blue. When you shine a blue laser on the silver side, nothing. It doesn't spin. Put it on the black side, and it definitely spins. Okay, let's let it stop, let's try the green laser, put it on the silver side, nothing, put it on the black side, it's spinning, I'm trying to rotate, but not as easily as it did with the blue, see it's trying to rotate, there it goes. Blue definitely rotated easier. Now let's try the red. Red on the silver, nothing. Red on the black, nothing. Red does not make it spin. I think that's probably due to the wavelength. Okay, I asked Copilot, what's the equation that relates the frequency of electromagnetic radiation to its energy? 
says that would be Planck's equation, states that the energy of electromagnetic radiation is directly proportional to its frequency. The formula is E equals H nu. Looks like a V, but it's pronounced nu. Where E is the energy, H is Planck's constant, and nu is the frequency. Now, you got to also look at the wave equation. The wave equation, the formula is C equals lambda nu, where C is the volt speed of light, lambda is the wavelength, and nu is the frequency. It shows the inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency. Therefore, blue was the shortest wavelength, 405 nanometers, therefore had the highest energy. Green was kind of in the middle, and red was the lowest energy. This may help explain why the blue easily made the radiometer rotate, green rotated it slightly, and red, it wouldn't rotate at all. That's a possible explanation. Not 100% sure, but that is one possibility. Let's try black light. This is a black light flashlight. Okay. A little hard to see, but it is a black light flashlight. Let's shine it on there. It's definitely making it spin. It's kind of hard to focus on one side or the other, but because it's a pretty broad beam. It definitely rotates, it makes it spin. Now this is a normal LED flashlight. Works real well. It spins very easily. Pretty powerful flashlight. Now this, well hard to see, this is a Turian reptile heater. It's purely infrared. There's no visible light that comes off of it. We'll let the radiometer stop spinning and then put this close to it and see if it will rotate. Yep, it's rotating. Not real fast, but it is rotating. But this would be the longest wavelength of anything we've used. Okay, interesting results. Now this glass globe warmed up a little from that terrarium heater. So what I don't know is whether or not how much of the infrared was going through the glass and how much of it was just simply heating up the glass and the glass itself was providing radiant energy. Not sure. Okay, this is our terrarium heater. With looking at it with my FLIR infrared attachment for my iPhone. I'm going to hold the radiometer up between that. It's a little, going to be a little hard to see. But you can see, it effectively blocks out that thermal infrared coming off that. So that's why the infrared didn't really go through the glass that much. It just heated up the surface of the glass, which is interesting. So that's an effective block to that wavelength range coming off that terrarium heater. Let's try just putting my hands on it and just warm it up. Well, believe it or not, it is rotating. Not real fast, but it is rotating. So, is the infrared off my hand penetrating the glass, causing it to heat up, or just warming the glass? Like we showed with the terrarium heater here, um, the glass is probably blocking a lot of the infrared, but it does warm up, and therefore the inside of the glass then can radiate infrared off of the inside surface of the glass onto the veins. That's probably what's going on. It's interesting. I was fascinated by this. I did not expect the red light to not work at all. In fact, I wasn't sure if any of them worked because of the low power level, but they did. The, the uh, blue in particular, shorter wavelength, that's probably why. The uh, green did rotate it, but not quite as vigorously as the blue. Red, it just would not budge. So that was fascinating. I, I learned something. I hope you found this interesting and informative. If you did, please like the video and subscribe and check out our other links. 
We'd really appreciate it. Thank you.